So here it is, the Meizu Pro 7, not to be confused with the Meizu Pro 7 Plus. This is the cheapest model of the Meizu Pro 7 series. It boasts a Helio P25 processor, 4GB of LPDDR4X RAM, 64GB of eMMC 5.1 memory and it's actually smaller than the Meizu Pro 7 Plus with a 5.2 inch Full HD Super AMOLED screen and design wise it's the very same phone just smaller and it also has this info display or secondary display on its rear and the camera and all that stuff is the same too. It also boasts the same hi-fi specs so not much differences there. There is also a Helio X30 powered version of this smaller variant um, which is a bit more expensive but also boasts just 4 GB of RAM. So let's have a closer look at this phone. So on the rear you see the beautiful and well crafted full metal uni body which comes in golden color in this case and uh, this looks really really nice. Build quality is just great but the design is the very same as with the larger 5.7 inch model. Um, uh, the um, secondary info display works just like on the large version. It has the same size, the same resolution and it is enabled um, when flipping the phone or double tapping on it and then it displays the day and time and also a step counter and weather information and you can also do selfies with the main camera which again is powered by two 12 megapixel Sony IMX386 sensors with f2.0 aperture, one with color, one with black and white mode and a dual LED flash. Having a look at the other sides, we find a 3.5mm headphone jack on the bottom side, a USB Type-C port and of course a voice microphone and the speaker opening. This one again has just a mono speaker, but like on the large Pro 7 Plus, it sounds really good, lots of basses. Um, bass is a little bit lower than on the large version due to the um, well, due to less available space for resonance inside of there, but still it sounds really, really good. Having a look at uh, the left side, we find uh, the SIM tray, which takes two nano SIM cards. There is no micro SD card expansion on this film. On the upper side, we find the environmental microphone used for stereo audio recording when doing videos and of course also for noise cancelling when doing phone calls. And on the right side, we find the volume rocker as well as the power button. When flipping the front into the camera view, we find the earpiece along with the sensors embedded into it, the 16 megapixel front camera, of course the screen and the typical Meizu M-Touch home button with embedded fingerprint scanner. And what's kind of nice is that the smaller version of the Meizu Pro 7 boasts much smaller bezels. Um, which is nice to see, makes it a very compact phone, really nice to use, but it's a bit heavier for a 5.2 inch device with above 160 grams. So like the Meizu Pro 7 Plus, the Meizu Pro 7 boasts a Super AMOLED screen just with a lower resolution of 1080p and the size as mentioned before is 5.2 inches. It's a very good AMOLED screen with popping colors, good brightness, but not as bright as uh, the Meizu Pro 7 Plus. But still, outdoor readability is quite good. Viewing angles, of course, are too. Colors to pop, overall, a great screen. But um, you definitely do notice pixels when coming closer to the panel because of the pentile matrix used on those AMOLED screens. So on the Pro 7 Plus you don't see single pixels even when coming very close due to the high 2K resolution. But here you definitely can see them, but as I said only when coming very close. Um, with a normal distance you usually have when using your phone, you won't notice them at all. What's very neat too is uh, that the touchscreen reacts very fast and precise. It's a really good 10 point touchscreen, um, really no input lag here really nice to use this. Performance wise they did a very nice job optimizing the Helio P25 so the Meizu Pro 7 in the Helio P25 version again is a very speedy phone. Do you notice a difference compared to the Helio X30 version? Yep you do but not always. Basic stuff pretty much works as smooth as on the Helio X30 version but 
um, badly programmed or uh, demanding applications will run a, a little slower. Um, it really depends on the apps. For example, in Facebook, when scrolling through your Facebook feed, this is totally smooth on the Helio X30 version, but on the Helio P25 version, as you can see, there is some very minor stutter, some slight hiccups from time to time, but nothing disturbing. But you definitely do notice um, a slightly different performance level here. Um, where you also notice uh, the uh, performance difference is games, not necessarily in terms of smoothness. Most games run just as smooth on the Helio P25 as they do on the Helio X30, but graphics quality actually is uh, different on the Helio P25, which is ex especially noticeable on one game, which is a fairly new title, and that's called Race Kings. So when you fire this up on the Helio P25 version of the Meizu Pro 7, you still have a very smooth gaming experience, but the graphics quality is not as good as on the Meizu Pro 7 with Helio X30 or Meizu Pro 7 Plus with Helio X30. Um, you especially notice this in terms of um, anti-aliasing. Um, contours of objects look a little pixely, and also the shadows and light effects don't look as high quality as they do on the Helio X30 phones. Um, you can notice the missing anti-alias in here on the borders of the car. So you still can play well on the P25 version of the Pro 7, but graphics quality isn't always on par with the high-end version. As far as reception quality goes, I don't have really anything to complain about there. Just like on the other Meizu Pro 7 slash Pro 7 Plus um, devices, reception quality is top notch, both in, in mobile networks, GPS and also Wi-Fi. Still, uh, the Helio P25 version has some downsides to it. First, Wi-Fi. It doesn't support AC Wi-Fi, it only supports dual band ABGN Wi-Fi, which is noticeably slower than AC Wi-Fi. You still can get up around 100 Mbit per second of bandwidth, but uh, likely not more, which is a little sad, but most will likely be able to live with this. Um, what did disappoint me too is that this phone does not support band 20 LTE. Now you might say that uh, this Helio P25 version is supposed to support band 20 LTE. Yep, it is supposed to. Meizu says it on their global website and most shops list it with band 20 LTE support. But in fact, it just doesn't support band 20 LTE, which I stumbled about when I tried to establish a 4G connection here. Um, and here on my area where I live only band 20 LTE is available and I haven't been able to connect to the LTE network so no band 20 LTE is supported here. And I can prove this to you by having a look into engineer mode, band mode and here you see all the supported frequencies and as you can see no band 20 LTE support. Now the question is why is this like that? Why is there no band 20 LTE support? Well, I believe there are different versions of the P25 model. One model for the Chinese market without band 20 LTE and one model for the international markets with band 20 LTE. And I suspect that I just got a version of the Meizu Pro 7, um, which is uh, the Chinese model. So that's why no band 20 LTE is present there. I already got in touch with Meizu to make sure I am right about this. I am still awaiting an answer, so hopefully I will be able to answer this in the full review. But till then, please make sure that you buy the right one, because if you don't pay attention to this, you might end up having the phone without the Band 20 LTE support, despite you would need Band 20 LTE. Camera-wise, despite boasting the very same sensors as the large Pro 7 Plus or the Helio X30 version of the Pro 7, the P25 model of the Meizu Pro 7 performs a tiny bit different in 
in the camera department. Um, during daylight pictures, macro shots and all that stuff you likely won't notice it. You still get very crisp and sharp detailed pictures with very natural colors um, and that look just gorgeous. There is really not much of a noticeable difference when comparing it to the Pro 7 Plus. Um, but what you do notice though is that low light performance is a tad worse than on Helix 30 powered versions of the Pro 7. Now I don't want to say that low light performance is bad, it is far from being that. It's still a great phone for low light photography, but um, when doing long exposure shots, for example, you definitely notice a certain difference when comparing um, the performance to the Helio X30 powered versions of this phone. Um, here on this picture you can notice this very well. I did the exactly same shot on the Pro 7 Plus, but it doesn't look as good, as detailed, as crisp and sharp. There is a bit of noise where the Meizu Pro 7 Plus handled uh, the situation without any noise and also uh, there might be some lens flares which uh, the Meizu Pro 7 Plus manages to filter out with the more advanced camera ISP whereas the Pro 7 doesn't do that with the P25 processor. So. Camera performance is very similar, but there are a few minute differences. But if you don't know the Meizu Pro 7 Plus or the Helix 30 version of the Pro 7, you likely won't be able to notice any difference at all. So it really doesn't matter and you can basically say that the camera performance is about the same. What's great is that battery life is somehow better than on the Meizu Pro 7 Plus despite this phone boasting a smaller battery. It only has a 3000 mAh cell whereas the Meizu Pro 7 Plus had a 3500 mAh cell. But still as you can see the screen on time on average right now is 8 hours 16 minutes which is a great result considering that I haven't used this phone for too long right now and did a lot of benchmark tests which needs a lot of energy. So when using this phone normally in real life use I expect a rise in screen on time, in average screen on time to about 9 to maybe even 10 hours, we will see about that. But right now I can see that battery life is better on this version because apparently the P25 is more power efficient which is nice to see. But that comes with a downside, the Meizu Pro 7 with Helio P25 is slow when charging the battery. The 3500mAh cell on the Meizu Pro 7 Plus was charged within just one hour while the Pro 7 with Helio P25 takes 2 hours 18 minutes for a charge from 20 to 100% which is much slower. It's not the worst charging time, but still it's noticeably slower. So yeah, fast charging could be better on this one. So that's it for the first impressions about the Meizu Pro 7 with the Helio P25 processor. I will now test this beauty in real life for about one week as my daily driver and then I will do the full review telling you my final thoughts about it. So thanks for watching this unboxing slash first impression video and see you then with the full review. Bye bye.